Welcome to Obsidian. Let's get started with Data View. Alright, so for my regular viewers, you may have noticed there's a new sort of graphic on the top left corner of my video today. I have started rating them as sort of beginner, intermediate, and uh, expert. Um, and I think that's something I'm going to do going forward, just so that any of the newcomers who are coming into Obsidian are able to sort of quickly identify what are the easiest steps um, that they should be able to follow versus the more advanced things they can follow. And today is going to be a more advanced video. Um, we're going to be diving into Data View. And for anyone who has worked around with Obsidian for a while, you've probably heard of Data View. It's one of those plugins that is used extensively throughout the community. Um, and I'd go as far as to say that originally, Obsidian didn't really have the, this idea that data view was going to be possible, I would wager. Um, data view, how do you describe it? It's, it's so powerful. It gives you query-like functionality inside of your vault. And for anyone who works with databases, you know what I'm talking about. The ability to effectively query your folders and return data. And that is incredibly powerful. So let's jump in. Let's have a look and show you what I'm talking about. I've got a few demos set up here today, but first we just need to walk through, you know, just a bit of terminology. And what we're going to be talking about is YAML or front matter. Um, I call it front matter. Um, YAML is another word that it goes for, but basically what is it? It's basically front matter is designed to be sort of like metadata that uh, is readable by humans and obsidian. And uh, you may have seen it already in your notes. If we go into edit mode here, we'll see that there's the, uh, the dash, 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 and the dash, dash, dash. Anything contained within the dashes is what we call um, the metadata um, or the front matter, or the metadata within the front matter, probably, for that matter. <laughs> so anyway, what we have here is we've got a couple of variables. So you can see key is a variable, key two is a variable, key three is a variable, and key four is a variable. And this is just showcasing, and I've taken this from the official Obsidian demo, um, you know, how different variables work. So, you know, these ones are pretty basic. So key equals value, key two equals value two. Key three though equals one, two, three, and key four equals four, five, six. So just some different ways of sort of managing that. And it's important to understand this here because um, what we're gonna move into next uses this extensively. So just understand that, you know, a, a variable is effectively a box, all right? It's a box that you store information in. Um, you know, most of the time you store one piece of information inside of a variable. Sometimes you store a couple of pieces of information inside of a variable, and that's the examples here. But effectively, that's what it is. And if you've, uh, you know, come across computer programming languages, they use variables a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's very common to, to use a box to bring back a piece of uh, information that you're going to use in your code, and that's what a variable is. So, all right, let's jump in and have a look then. So you can see here that uh, I've got a copy of my front matter. I just want to call out that this is not my actual front matter. You can see that that is hidden here in the back end of my note or the top section of my note. I guess you could say the front is the top and that's how I like to refer to it as the front matter is the, the top matter. That's where my variables are stored. Um, obviously though, when I go back into editing mode, uh, sorry, preview mode, you can't actually see that. So I've basically put a copy here for you guys so that you can see what that looks like. Um, you can see that I've coded this out. All right, so that this is effectively not taken into consideration with what I'm doing. It's effectively just text at this point, but it lets you see what the variables are called. All right, so let's jump in and have a look at the inline expressions then. All right, so inline expressions is a way of bringing a variable into your notes. All right, like, so let's say that you have a variable at the top of your note that says name and in the name is something called Josh. All right, what we can do with an inline expression is we can actually say, I want to bring Josh into my notes and I want to list Josh somewhere. So let's go through and have a look and see how we do that. If we go into edit mode, come down here, we can see equals this dot name or equals this dot key. What we're doing is we're saying, I want this text to be equal to this notes, a variable in this note, so equals this dot variable name. And in this case here, we can say equals this dot key or equals this dot name. And we can do things like this. My name is equals this dot name. And if we go into edit mode, you can see my name is Josh, all right? That's quite powerful, and you can probably, uh, well, some of you have probably seen situations where I'm already using this um, in different situations. So if we have a look here at uh, Aurora, 
Um, we can see that over here I've got the, um, the wiki style uh, info box. And you can see here that basically I'm using these inline queries quite a lot to populate this, this box. All right, so just to show you over here, we can see dragon, we can see the race, the class, the condition. And if we go back to the metadata, we can say there's the player name, there's the race, um, there's the role. All right, and down here, what we're doing is we're populating this table with equals this dot race, equals this dot class, equals this dot, dot sex. And as you can see, that means I don't need to type that information again and again and again in multiple locations. So very, very fond of this uh, this little piece of functionality because it's really quite a time saving time saving thing, right? Um, for any TTRPG players, if you set your templates up um, correctly and put a bit of thought into it, you can save yourself a lot of time in the future by having a template that has got these inline queries, bringing the information into the areas where you know they're going to be required, instead of having to copy things manually. Now, to set one of these things up is very easy. I do apologize, I can't remember the name of this damn key again. Someone did teach me, it's two words. Um, but it's the, the one for me, it's next to the one key. Um, all right, so we can see all I'm doing is equals this dot, and we'll go key four. All right, and then we go back in, you can see four, five, six. So it's pulled four, five, six into that. Now it's worth calling out here that uh, this is a, uh, a multi-variable, this key four here, so it's stacking it on top of each other. So that's inline queries, it's quite simple. Um, very effective though, all right? It's very, very, you can use this in so many intelligence ways. So I recommend you do explore it and see what you find. All right, we can get a bit more powerful though. Inline JS expressions. So uh, JS stands for JavaScript. It's a, it's a programming language that's commonly used in web applications. Um, and I, I, I can't read it. Like I do a little bit of coding. I'm a pretty bad coder. Um, but, you know, I, I can't read JavaScript, I'll be completely honest, I just don't get it. So don't come asking me for support, guys, because I don't know how to write the stuff. All I do is I copy other people on the internet, all right? If you jump into the official um, Discord channel, have a look at the, um, the Plugin Advanced channel. There's a sub-channel within that called Data View, um, and within that you can find a lot of support for this sort of stuff. But just to show you some of the things that are possible. so. Where inline expressions are kind of working with the folders and the files within your vault, and specifically, obviously, the variables within those files, JS expressions allows you to sort of step outside that, that limitation and start working with other things. So in this case here, um, we're going to return the actual current time. This one here, we're going to return the name of the file. This one here, we're going to return the path of the file. And you see if we go into the mode here, we can see it's currently 4 p.m. It's August 7th, 2022. Data view examples is the name of my note, so it's pulling that information into here. Um, and then testbed data view examples is actually where this folder is sitting. So testbed data view examples. So just some uh, some ideas on just you know what you can bring in with a, a JS expression. Um, I will say this: like the, the amount of things you can do with the, the JS expressions is pretty intense. Um, and there's people out there who are figuring this stuff out. I recommend, again, that you jump into the Discord. Um, you keep an eye on that data view channel and you see what people are talking about because they're coming up with some really cool ideas. All right, data view query. <clears throat> this is where I think it's really going to be quite uh, valuable for you as Dungeon Masters. Um, and it's the ability to create a table automatically from your notes. This is insanely powerful. So you can see here, I've got a data view query and I've got a table. In this case here, it's a table of all of my players. Okay, if we come down here, I've got a folder called the party in there, my deadly depth in, that's the name of our group, or at least that's the, the name of the first in that we, we ever started playing in, it's kind of stuck. Um, and you can see here, you know, we've got a copy of all these sort of notes, all right? Um, and what this is, let's show you the code. It's a data view query, and you can see here that it starts with this sort of, um, I need to find the name of these things again, but it's next to the one key. Um, so it starts with a little code starter, then data view. Then on a fresh line, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a table. So we're saying we wanna make a table, we want it to have uh, a couple of columns. So player, class, race, and level. All right, so player, class, race, and level. 
Note that it always creates a file column as the starter, which is usually the name, well, not usually, it's the name of the note. So in this case here, let's create a table. And then we're saying, we're gonna create a table from, and you can see here that I'm pointing directly to the folder where I wanna pull these notes from. So this is a, a query that I use to specifically create a table of my players. All right, so I've got it all in one location. So I know where my player notes sit, so I've hard coded that. So I'm just saying from, this folder, so zero dot the party, that's this one here, forward slash deadly depth in, that's that there, and then these items all sit in there. So I'm saying, I want this query to run and I want you to only look in this folder. And then I've got another filter on here effectively that says where role equals player. And if we have a look here at the metadata of uh, Aurora, you can see that role equals player. Okay, and the reason why I've done that is I've got things like the journey board in here, for example. So if I was to take this out, all right, take that out of the query, you can see that I get all these other results in here that I don't actually want. So I've actually managed to filter it. So this is, this is quite powerful to be completely honest, guys. And there's different ways you could do this. Like this is a where role equals player. Um, I've got another one actually, where did I stick that the other day? And you can do a contains. Uh, it's one of these, I think. Da, da, da. Oh, maybe not. Probably shouldn't have clicked that one. It's worth noting guys that some of these are very large. Okay, if you're going to run a, a very uh, well, a query that returns a lot of results, you're going to see system performance. And what you just saw there was exactly that. That was system performance issues where basically I loaded up something um, and then as I've done that, it's basically like locked my, my sitting up while it's thinking all of those things through. So I just want you guys to be aware of that, right? So if you're gonna be running a really big uh, data view query, you are going to see impact. Now. I just clicked it again. I probably shouldn't have done that. What I tend to do is I actually go back and I, um, I I tend to make smaller queries. Like I don't have a query that goes, I want you to return every single monster because it does exactly that. And don't get me wrong, like this query is returning every single monster. That is something that can be done. But you can see there was a visible pause in my system when I did that. And I don't want that. All right, so what was I was trying to show you was where the contains comes in. So the, here you go. So contains.cobold. So you can do where role equals something, or you can say, um, we could probably do it this way. Contains role player. No, I got that wrong. do one of these somewhere. Actually, I think it's in here. It's in my mechanics, in my groups. There it is, the purple dragons. There you go. So where contains, whoa, let's just copy that. I'll go back into here. We're just gonna modify this query. I'll put it on the next line. So where contains, oh, looks like that should have almost worked to be honest. Maybe I had like a little space or something that was wrong, but uh, as you can see, that does work as well. So that is very powerful there. The, the, the contains versus the um, versus the equals. It's a very, very powerful um, piece of functionality. So I'm just gonna keep a copy of that. Um, now, one thing I do recommend with anything that you're doing here, guys, is if I'm showing you how to do something cool, go ahead and make a template with it. All right, and what I mean by that is, if, and I you bring up my template, I go TTRPG, I've actually got a template for data view TTRPG stat blocks, right? Um, 
uh, insert monsters, custom monsters, all my templates, everything that I you know need to do that's got code in it, I have a template for it so I can insert it. So in this case here, what I'll do is I'll make sure that I've got a template for a data view query on a folder. So something like this, just in a, in a new note, but I'll do one that has an equal and I'll do one that has a contains. So that, that way I don't need to remember the syntax the next time I do this. I'm just gonna go back and check my template, insert it into my current note, and then manipulate it in order to do what I want. And what do I need mean by manipulate? Well, you know, let's say I was doing this on monsters, I'd probably change player to monster name or whatever it is based on the type of data that's in my in my note. Now that's another thing that's probably worth playing here. So you can see here that I have created my table using player class race and level. You can see player class, class race and level, right? They are things that exist in here. So these need to match these. All right, so the end result of that is obviously like quite cool. You can see here that I've returned a data view query that now returns all of my players. I can see the player names, what class they are, their race, their level. Um, I've also got it working so that, you know, we can actually mouse over these things and that makes it really, really cool. So that's a data view query. And don't get me wrong, this is just the basics, guys. Like, this is how to make a table out of your folders. Like, it is the most basic of basic level. And some of this stuff goes to the absolute umpteenth depth that people will probably drown in. So, you know, feel free to explore this. And as I said, do jump into the Discord and have a look. All right. Data view JS queries, probably like the, the next step up, the, the next probably level of advancement. And I'm going to be frank here, guys. Like what I'm about to show you, I can barely read. I, I kind of get what it's doing. Um, I mean, I understand it, but for me to sit down and write this on my own, that's not something I'm generally capable of. I'm a copy coder, right? I go to Google, I go to Discord, I find people are doing things. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I manipulate it and I try to figure out what it's doing. So... This is a data JS query. Uh, specifically, this one is a special one. Um, it's really cool for um, DMs because it's the TTRPG stat block plugin. It's looking at the data.json file that that plugin uses, uh, initiative tracker as well, I believe, um, and returning the monsters. So in here, we start with a data JS line to start off the code. Um, then we basically it's setting a, a constant, so it's setting an, a, a variable effectively that's going to use. Um, it's basically saying, where would we like to return this from? So it's checking out the window B street values. It's doing a filter. So where filter m.name, where m.name to lowercase, that is important in here. The name must be in lowercase in this. If you always to do a capital K, I don't believe this would work. No, there you go. So it must be in lowercase. But the important thing is this right here. So we can see that this is filtering, all right, because um, it says filter on contains cobalt. So what's this gonna do? It's gonna filter on all of my TTRPG stat block monsters on the word cobalt. And you can see that all of these that have been returned have the word cobalt in them. All right, next, very similar to up above, right, where we created the table. We're designing what the table looks like. In here, dv.table, uh, we're doing the same thing. So we've got name, HP, ACR, AC, CR, source. If we have a look at what this is doing, name, HP, AC, CR, source. All right, so it is bringing in all of that. Now, the fun part about this is it's basically uh, got access to all of the information from your monsters. So if we were to come in here and go down to TTRPG, the TTRPG stat blocks, we can come in here and have a look at a monster. So let's have a look at the Eloth. All right, we've got all this different information. Um, and what we can do is we can actually copy one of the variables or one of the, the categories on a line or whatever you want to call it. We can copy the, the, the terminology or the syntax exactly. I'm going to copy hit dice or hit underscore dice. Come back to here because what we could actually do is add this in. All right, so it says hit dice. Now in this case here, I think I'm creating the table. So I'm going to actually call it hit dice. And then down here, we're going to go monster dot hit dice. And I reckon we have to move that to the back. 
All right, now we bring the hit dice in. All right, so that's very important to understand is that you have a whole database of information there. It's all sitting in your JSON files. You can draw that information in from this file if you like. Now, as I said, this is a very specific uh, example. I don't know how to write this stuff by default, okay? And I'm sure there are some amazing things that people are doing with JS Query, but this is a really good example of just how strongness of this plugin is um, from a DM perspective, I guess you could say. All right, so I'm just gonna rewind that because I don't actually need the hit dice on there. So we're gonna get rid of that. All right, now we'll just go through and explain it. So the db.table again is creating the table. This is, I want you to make a table. I want column one to be named, then HP, AC, well, don't do that. Uh, AC, CR, source. And then the next line is, well, what information do you want to populate into that table? So this is coming along and saying that, well, we want you to map this in. So we're going to bring in the monster name. Note that this one here is different to this one here. All right. And just to show you the difference, if I get rid of that and I type monster.name, we see we get the monster names. But note, there's no links here. All right, I, I can't hold my mouse to, or click to open up that note. What I had before was link monster.name. And what that does is that creates a link to the name. So in this case here, I can now hold my mouse over Cobalt and go directly to the Cobalt note. Now, what I want to stress here, the, the data.json file doesn't contain the note, okay? The note that this is linking to is actually completely separate to this query. It's completely separate to the data. I have kobolds having their own note. Inside of that note, I bring in the stat block. I've got a picture. I've got an encounter block. Okay, but that's actually got nothing to do with the data view query. And if you come down here, you'll see a good example of that. So dragon kobold profit, I don't have a note for. So therefore, it's basically saying that it's, it's not created yet. Would you like to create it? But I'm just letting you guys know this because this is a really cool thing that you can do. All right, you can have all your notes for all of your monsters or all your spells or whatever it is that you want to do. And then in your data view query, you're obviously using this. Um, where is it? The, the db.file link monster name. All right, you could use something similar to actually create a link. And then by having those notes in your database, like your level of linkage and your speed of being able to access that data just ramps up quite significantly. So as you can see, quite powerful. So yeah, once we run that, you can see that that uh, updates. Um, what I really like about this is that I now have a way to say, well, hang on, um, what have we got available to us? Like we're going to run a goblin fight. How many goblins have we got? Whoa, all right, we've got a lot of goblins. This is a list of all the different goblins that are available to us. So we can come through, um, and if I set these up properly, you know, you can actually uh, do a bit of research, find out which goblin it is that you want to bring into the fight. Um, you know, you could just use the normal goblins, but that gets boring pretty quickly. So I like that this sort of functionality gives me access to query my database um, and see what's going on. Now, what this also means, though, is for those guys who are coming from Realmworks, um, you know, this concept of having, I guess, the old Realmworks monster manual, like the whole monster manual in your book, I don't believe that's necessary anymore. I've got all my monsters inside of TTRPG stat block. I can return those stat blocks really easily. And as long as I've got the stat block and an example, I'm pretty happy. Um, I do like having the picture so I can go open outside Ooh. and what I can do with that is that I can show that to my players. So open a new window, I can then show that to my players on the player facing screen. So that is a cool thing about having that. But there's a lot of information in here that I generally don't use and it's just a duplication of everything from here. So I kind of stopped and moved away from that direction. Um, but anyway, getting off track, as you can see, like we've, we've now gone through a number of things. So inline expressions, how to bring a value into your note. All right, inline JS expressions, bring in more advanced uh, information in that's not necessarily part of your note, but it might be related to your note. Data view query, create a folder, uh, sorry, a table based on the, uh, the notes that it's obviously looking at. And then data view JS query. Very, very powerful ability to uh, sort of query some um, external different files and bring in, uh, you know, really fantastic results. But I guess the one big thing I will call out is that data view 
does have the potential to slow your vault down, so just be very careful with that, um, because obviously the more notes that you return in a query, the longer it's going to take for that query to sort of finalize, um, you know, sorting through all that information and presenting it in the way that the computer understands. So um, if you run a data view query on your whole vault, sometimes it will lock up. Um, you might just sit there and wait, or you might need to do like a control or delete and a hard reset to, to get yourself back. So something to be aware of. Now, where does all this sort of come in and start to become really powerful? Just to get you guys, like your creative juices, starting to run. Uh, this is the Purple Dragons. Uh, actually, I want to go back. This is the Shadow Bar. Oh, I don't have any members of the Shadow Bar yet. But you can see here that this down here is an automatic populating table based on those notes. And I know I've shown this, uh, this to you guys before, but I have had a couple of people reach out and say, hey, this isn't working for me. What it was is data view. I hadn't done a video on data view before. So you've got to have data view installed. You can see here that I've got uh, the data view there. Um, I will just say like this is the uh, the syntax in order to get it working on the back end of your, um, your right hand wiki style tables. Okay, is this section here. You can see that I don't actually have like the, the close out here. So these, all right, because you can see it fails. So the query, uh, the, the syntax for setting it up inside of a table is a little bit different. Um, but you know, I'll, uh, I'll let you guys pause on the screen here so you can see what that looks like. And you know, if you want to add it to your tables, you can, but yeah. All right, guys, anyway, that has been data view. Hopefully that has been helpful. Um, it's something that, look, I, I can't teach you everything that you're going to need to know about data view. You really do need to jump into the Discord, um, see what people are doing with it, ask questions, um, and really sort of maybe dive into the readme file, have a look online. There are just so many resources and really intelligent people just smashing out content with this stuff. So go in, have a look, see what they're doing, and see if you can learn how to do something yourself. Um, and you know, if you do something cool, come and post it on the Facebook group or in the Discord channel so we can have a look at it because we're all learning from each other. Um, and I, I think the uh, the possibilities that we can go to with DataView are really quite extensive. So anyway, guys, um, this has been DataView. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do enjoy it, please do like and subscribe. Outside of that, guys, I will speak to you on the forums and a huge thanks to all my patrons. You guys make this all possible. So. Well done. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your day.